Mr. Lorenzen here. Remember like a thousand years ago before the world changed, sometimes I'd stop class and talk to you about things that seemed really important. And you mostly listened because I seemed like a reasonable guy who liked to wear comfortable clothing and talk directly to you. Kind of like this guy right here, who's pretty nice. Uh, I'm coming at you to share something that felt really important to me. I'm not a representative of Hoodera County School District today, but I am gonna change my hat to something dress code appropriately. So I've talked to you guys about things like American political parties before and the Supreme Court and last week, the common good. We've got a lot of new things going on here and we've heard these hashtags, flatten the curve, social distancing, wash your hands. Today, I'd like to add a new one to this. Stay the F home. We're gonna start with a math lesson. There's an ancient Chinese story about a guy who maybe invented the chessboard, and he asked for the emperor, from the emperor, uh, his payment was a single grain of rice on the first a square, and then doubling every square after that. There's 64 squares here. The emperor thought that that sounded pretty cool, but this is how exponents work. First, one, two, four, eight, 16. The amount doubles every day. Now, that's great, except it doesn't take long till it adds up to quite a bit. In fact, this is what it looks like uh, over the 64 squares. It actually only takes to get to the 34th square to get to more people than there are in the entire world. <clears throat> this is the way the coronavirus has spread in Oregon. On Sunday, Oregon added three cases. On Monday, Oregon added nine cases. Yesterday, Oregon added 19 cases. Some of that is because of increased testing, and some of that is, that's right, the power of exponents. So let's talk about social distancing. Social, the st sources I've read say 60-80% of transmission is from asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic people. Asymptomatic means that you are infected and carry the virus, but don't actually get sick. That's awesome. Unfortunately, you can still spread the virus. Pre-symptomatic means that you are infected, but haven't shown any symptoms yet. But it's coming and it will suck. Because the incubation period can be five to 14 days, you can be asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic for a long time, and all that time you can spread the virus. That's why our social distancing isn't about the cases we'll find tomorrow. It's about the cases we'll find next week. We won't really know if our efforts are working until next week. And social distancing isn't just about protecting you from others. It's about protecting others from you. This is the match analogy. We'd really like to stop the spread. Here's Hood River County. I'm gonna to try to make this math real for you. Hood River has about 24,000 people. Some estimates say that ultimately 50% of the population will become infected. Good news, 80% of the people will suffer mild to moderate symptoms, but moderate basically just means short of hospitalization. So that's 9,600 people, which is cool. That means 2,400 people get really sick though. Of those 12,000 who get sick, roughly 5% will require intensive care. That's 600 people, about the size of the junior and senior classes combined. This is Providence Hood River Memorial Hospital, our local hospital, and it's a pretty good place. But according to the American Healthcare Directory, Providence Hood River Memorial only has 25 staffed beds. If we don't slow this thing down, that's not gonna be enough. Of the 12,000 people who might get sick, roughly 2% might die. That's 200 and 240 people. According to the best stats I could find, Hooderbrook County generally has about 180 deaths per year. COVID-19 could more than double that. Shit. Which brings me back to stay the F home. If you need more reasons to stay the F home, here's my wife. See, she's the smartest, funniest, 
uh, and most intelligent, most caring, and also beautiful. But that's my ideal woman I ever met. She's a labor and delivery nurse at Providence Hoonerman Memorial. She helps deliver babies, and just like I might have taught some of your older siblings and your parents, she may have delivered your younger siblings. She's quite a bit younger than I am. Here's the thing about babies. They don't care if there's a pandemic or an ice storm or a circus in town. They come when they're ready, and they're usually pissed about it. Here's a baby who's not impressed. Which means that she will keep working at the hospital that is completely overwhelmed. This is very difficult to say, but I pretty much assume that eventually she will be infected, which sucks a lot. And if she gets it, that means some of the babies will too. These are my kids. Aren't they cute? I don't, I don't usually show their faces on social media. If mama gets sick, they'll probably get sick too. And if you care, probably me too. We are aggressively social distancing in my house, but we need your help. Not everyone can stay home. Babies come. The pharmacy has to stay open. The police have to work. People have to sell groceries and someone has to keep the lights on and the water running and the internet too. So if you please, if you can, please stay the F home. Do it for your community. Do it for the babies. Do it for the people who have to work do it for me and do it for you stay the f home if you like this video i've got a couple more in mind i wouldn't mind if you shared them around maybe use the hashtag stay the f home i've made my instagram here open public mr zen hrv you could uh maybe shoot me a picture of you staying the f home uh, and sharing this video around <laughs>